Welcome back to Chips and Salsa. I'm Crobe. I'm Jerry. And in this episode, we're talking to Intel's Yakov Cohen, Ari Henel, and Yossi Oren, who uh, also happens to be visiting us here at Intel as part of the Academic Researcher in Residence program. Cool. Uh, about new research that they presented today at ACMCCS called Hammerscope. Jerry, stop. Hammer scope. <laughs> uh, I saw a hammer. A, <laughs> this was a, a really cool collaboration that they did between you know, academics and Intel researchers, and they were using a, a software method to observe activity patterns of memory. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. So let's uh, hear more from our guests uh, uh, about their research. Okay, uh, welcome everyone to uh, the show. Thanks for joining Krobe and I here today. Why don't uh, we go around and have you each introduce yourselves and you know uh, what you do at Intel, and uh, and then we'll get started talking about Hammerscope. Okay, my name is Yako, and I'm a software engineer in my background. I started my journey in the security world uh, with uh, CTF competi competition and uh, courses. Um, and, and enthusiasm by security in general. Uh, I'm, wo I'm working in Intel uh, since uh, 2017 as a female security researcher, uh, working on a wide range of uh, products. Cool. All right. Okay. Yes, so my name is Ariel. I'm a principal engineer here at uh, Intel IPAS, Product Assurance and uh, Security Group. I lead a team called uh, ASSERT, and it's an offensive security research team. It stands for Advanced System Security uh, Evaluation Research Team. Uh, I have something like 25 years of experience in uh, security product development and security research in uh, several companies. And for five years, I'm here at, uh, at Intel. And on my free time, I'm also an adjunct lecturer at the Jerusalem College of Technology. Very busy guy there. <laughs> Yossi, how about you? Hi, uh, I'm Yossi. Uh, usually, I'm an assistant professor in uh, Ben Gurion University uh, studying cybersecurity. But for the Past a uh, couple of months, I'm in sabbatical. I'm a researcher in residence at uh, Intel's iStair lab, uh, the lab where Intel tries to hack its own chips. You can read about it. And um, basically, uh, I'm in kind of a paradise right now. But uh, let's talk about the paper, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we'll come back and talk to you later about the researcher in residence program, because that's... Mm -hmm. Super cool, but you, yes, you guys uh, are doing a talk um, on a paper that you call Hammerscope. So let's go ahead and have uh, you just give us a overview. What is Hammerscope? And um, I don't know who wants to start. Okay, so on conceptual level, Hammerscope is a software method which can be used uh, to observe activity patterns of the memory. Uh, in more details, we took a closer look of previously discovered uh, fault attacks in name uh, Raw Hammer, uh, which allow the software attacker to flip bits in memory. Uh, we discovered that if we use this uh, Raw Hammer attack in a certain ways, we can use it uh, uh, to learn things about uh, the system internal activity. And we found that uh, Raw Hammer attack success is uh, correlated with the DRAM power consumption. And uh, you can, we can use that uh, information to perform several uh, attacks, and but uh, more of that can be can be read in the paper. I just want to mention that uh, we partner in this research with uh, researchers from uh, Ben Gurion University, Jerusalem College of Technology, uh, Georgia Tech, and U University of Adelaide, and uh, we are very thankful uh, to all the brilliant researchers that we work with. So uh, this is pretty interesting. You know, why is this research so exciting? Okay, so I think that uh, we here we do uh, something very unique. Uh, we took a fault injection attack and create a side channel uh, exfiltration. 
Uh, it may sound counterintuitive since usually uh, fault injection is, is the way to write or, or change values of, b of bits or, or of arbitrary memory. And, um, uh, but here we use uh, this Rohammer fault injection method uh, in original way to, inter to, in to get information uh, from the system which uh, should be not access to the, to the user process. Uh, for example, we are able to use Hammerscope to break uh, kernel upper space randomization uh, protection and also uh, to read the uh, protected kernel memory from unprivileged user uh, mode process. And uh, we have more uh, examples in the paper that uh, you all invited uh, to read. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so that's, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. So Rohammer has been around for many years now. What? Uh, Hammerscope, what can users do to protect themselves? Um, okay, so this research is mainly about uh, exploring uh, on uh, fundamental physics effect in the in the DRAM. Uh, it's not about finding uh, new attacks. All the attacks we present in the paper uh, can be executed using different vectors in more efficient way or different ways. Uh, but as long as users follow the standard the security advice, they are not at risk at all. Um, don't worry, you don't need to buy a new computer or new DRAM, uh, everything's okay. For now. For now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's great news. <laughs> uh, so, you know, what steps do you take before publishing research like this? This sounds, uh, you know, very important and you want to make sure you're doing it carefully, right? So, in this case, yeah, the first thing for us was, for sure, uh, to responsibly disclose uh, everything that we have found um, to the memory vendors. Uh, we were also in contact with other partners in the industry that it may affect. Um, we, were, we had several discussions with several partners, even yeah, long after we are starting the process, till the last moment before we published, just to be sure that we are in sync with everyone. Um, there is also a very thoughtful process at Intel involving technical and legal experts before any disclosure publication. Uh, and yeah, this process may drive sometimes some of our, some of our academic partners yeah, a little crazy. But yeah, this is a necessary mean. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine so. <laughs> yeah, right. So let's talk a little bit about like uh, the team uh, that worked on this. You have a combination of academic and non-academic uh, researchers mm -hmm. that you all collaborated on. How was what was that experience like? So yeah, in our day-to-day -day job, we are offensive security researchers. So usually we're working on securing Intel products. Uh, and this work is quite different than what we usually do. So it was, it asked more, uh, much more than finding where a piece of code is security bugs. In, the, uh, in this work, uh, we need actually to understand the interactions between different components of the system. So uh, in even on a conceptual level, usually in the industry, you are interested in working proof of concepts and practical solutions. On the other hand, in the academy, uh, you need to completely understand the physics and the underlying principles, and uh, you always have to show that something is new, yeah? because if it's not a novelty, you will not publish. Uh, in the area of side channel research, uh, academics have a lot to share with the industry. Um, for this type of research, what was really interesting for us uh, to pursue was that it, it enabled us a specific symbiosis. On one hand, we have the flexibility and the freedom of the academic research. On the other hand, we had the practical and applied focus of the research uh, of the industry. So that's the way that we looked at that to get great results, work uh, both advantage at the same time. Um, and of course, we are looking to have more interactions of this kind where we can have both worlds uh, work together. Yeah, I, that's I think great. that's some excellent advice. 
Um, I was curious, you know, what are some of the next steps for your research? Where do you take this next? Or, you know, how do you continue to get this addressed? So, um, well, as uh, Yaakov mentioned, this research right now is low risk. Uh, you don't need to buy your new computers. Uh, and I don't like that. Uh, we, we would obviously love you to buy new computers. So, uh, so the next step is trying to see uh, what are the actual limits of this attack? Can it be, is it uh, as safe as we thought or should we be, be uh, more careful about it? This requires a better uh, low-level understanding of the physics uh, of this attack. So there are two ways of doing uh, a row hammer attack or a physical attack. One of them is top-down. You take a computer and you try to hack at it. And the other one is bottom-up. You start at the actual bits and electrons and, and capacitors and try to understand what makes the physics work. This is a, a top-down uh, research. Lots of hacking, lots of uh, script writing, lots of very uh, serious technical excellence by the team. Uh, but the, the other part of the equation, going up from the physics, from the bits, this is uh, another piece of research which I think would be very interesting and exciting to do. Hmm. Very cool. That's awesome. So uh, again, you guys uh, presenting uh, today at the uh, ACM CCS 2022 um, where can people go to get more information uh, about your research? So there's actually a very nice, there's actually a very nice uh, web page. Uh, it's in the description of the uh, video. I'm going to do like this, and I'm going to trust you guys to put it down there. Right? We'll put the link there. And there yeah. you can find the paper. Uh, you can find um, a link to uh, an open source repository with the source code we used for this attack. And you can find a very, very cool uh, three minute video showing how to break a kernel address space uh, layer of randomization, KASLR using Hammerscope. Great. Yeah, well, that's excellent. Yeah. I, for one, I, I really uh, appreciate the uh, collaboration between Intel and the academic community. Love to see that going on all the time. Uh, thank you all for, you know, coming on the show and, and describing your research to us. And you know, good luck with your talk today. And uh, you know, we'll we'll see you next time when you uh, have new research from the bottom up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Well, that's pretty uh, interesting research, and it's cool to see uh, the research getting shared uh, again at at the link below. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's it's just it, it's really amazing to see this, this ongoing collaboration between Intel and academics on you know this and so many other areas. It's super awesome. Yeah, uh, and stay tuned for more videos uh, later down the road where we'll be talking to some of the uh, academics and some of the various programs that Intel manages and sponsors because uh, there's a lot of great collaboration happening there. So I'm excited about it. So Me anyway, too. that's it for this episode of Chips and Salsa. Thanks for joining us. We'll see Have you next time. Have a great time. one.